Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Voitenkov. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Genway AI. Welcome to this short series of explainer videos covering the three pillars of our end-to-end -end platform for insights generating functions. In the previous two videos, I showcased the Craft with AI pillar, which allows non-technical functions to create an AI agent. In this pillar, we are going to uh, go on a live interview with an AI agent that is going to interview myself about my recent churn from Netflix. In the next episode, I will show you the analysis and the output of that interview. With that in mind, let's jump straight into the video. Those of you who watched the previous video would recognize this screen. This is the configuration level screen for the AI agent. So what I'm going to do now, I'm simply going to copy the interview link from here and I'm going to paste it into the browser. Once paced in the browser, this is the pre-interview lobby screen at which I can activate my camera. I can open my microphone. I can choose a whether I would like to conduct this interview talking or typing, there are some voice configurations, and I can also see a request to share the email account associated with my Netflix. In this particular instance, I'm still going to use my business account rather than my private one, and I'm going to start the interview. Hello, I'm Alex, the digital user experience interviewer by Netflix. I appreciate you taking the time to participate in this 20 minute interview. Do you have any questions about the interview process that I can assist you with? Uh, no, not in particular, but keep in mind that uh, I have only 10 minutes. So let's try to keep this interview short. Absolutely. I understand your time constraints and will do my best to keep this interview concise. Please remember that your responses will be kept anonymous and there are no right or wrong answers. By sharing your thoughts, opinions, and experiences, you will be helping the Netflix team understand what elements of the experience should be improved. So, let's start with the first question. How long have you been subscribed to Netflix prior to switching? Uh, if I remember correctly, I was a customer of Netflix probably since 2017 or around that time. At that point, I moved from Israel to Ireland and Netflix was very, was more popular there, there than it was in Israel. That's interesting. Can you share more about your reasons for leaving Netflix? Was it due to content dissatisfaction, pricing, technical issues, or any other factors? So I can say for certain that it wasn't about the pricing. I would say that all of the streaming services have roughly the same pricing. I see. So pricing wasn't a factor for you. Could you elaborate more on what led you to discontinue your Netflix subscription? Was it related to the content, user experience, or perhaps something else? So I would say it was a combination of two things. So the first is the fact that for a while I felt as if the content on Netflix wasn't as good as on other streaming platforms. And it might also have to do with the fact that at the time I actually moved back from Ireland to Israel and I always felt that the variety of content available in Israel is more limited compared to that in Ireland. And specifically kind of the thing that pushed me to leave was the fact that Shugun was being streamed on Disney. Shugun was this new series that I really wanted to watch because I read the books a few years ago and I was excited to see the series. That's insightful. It seems like content availability and variety played a significant role in your decision. Can you tell me more about how the difference in content between Ireland and Israel influenced your experience with Netflix? Yeah, so I don't have something in particular. It's just the fact that whenever I opened Netflix in Israel, I felt that there is a limited variety of content. 
and actually some of the series that I was watching while in Ireland became no longer available when I was in Israel. So for me, that was extremely annoying and frustrating. So for example, there was this one thing I was watching with a detective that he pretends to be, sorry, not pretends, it was a detective that he's actually the son of God or Satan or something. And that thing was available in Ireland, but it wasn't available in Israel. And it was annoying because I was like in the midst of the fourth season and I couldn't finish it. I can understand how that would be frustrating. It seems like the geographical restrictions on content significantly impacted your viewing experience. Did you try reaching out to Netflix's customer service about this issue? If so, how was your experience with them? No, so to be honest, I haven't tried. I believe that kind of having worked in tech for four or five years, I know how it works and the account is limited to the location at which you're located. So I wasn't really feeling that customer support would be able to resolve that problem. That's fair. Given your tech background, you understood the limitations. Now, considering your overall experience with Netflix, what do you think they could have done differently to retain you as a customer? It's a good question. Uh, I think that actually one thing they could have done is reach out to me, whether by email or through the app, or just like, I don't know, maybe give me a phone call. When I moved from Ireland to Israel, saying we noticed that you moved from Ireland to Israel, and some of the content that you previously used to watch will no longer be available in Israel, something, something, uh, we apologize for that, and we are going to prioritize making that content available in Israel, or offer me some kind of a discount, just something to acknowledge the fact that they understand that me as a customer, that I moved from one geo to the other, and I have a whole bunch of things that I'm watching on Netflix and that's no longer available. Ideally, I would like them to make that content available for two or three weeks so that I'm able to finish watching the things I was watching. That's a very thoughtful suggestion. A personalized approach acknowledging your geographical move and the impact on your viewing experience could have made a difference. Now, considering your current streaming service, how would you compare it to your experience with Netflix? It's a good question. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have sufficient amount of time to discuss it. I have only maybe a couple of minutes before I have to go. I understand your time constraints. Before we wrap up, is there anything you didn't manage to cover in this interview that you'd like to discuss? Uh, yeah, maybe one thing I would mention, and it's not a discussion, just kind of an observation. Recently, Netflix had some issues with offline content when I was flying from Israel to the States. When I was flying from Israel to Europe, I did not experience the same problem. So just FYI. Thank you for sharing that observation. It's valuable feedback that we can look into. Lastly, before we finish the interview, how was your experience interviewing with an AI interviewer today? Please share your candid feedback. Ah, listen, it was awesome. It's actually the first time that someone reaches out to me uh, out of Netflix to get my feedback. Uh, very happy with the fact that I could do it in the early morning hours as kind of best fits my schedule while sipping my coffee and not having to go through all the pleasantries and politeness and everything related to one-to-one -one interview with an actual employee of Netflix. I'm glad to hear that you had a positive experience. Your feedback is greatly appreciated and will help us improve our services. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Perfect. So the interview is over and I will be redirected to the thank you page in five seconds. Over here, I can opt in for a follow-up study if someone from Netflix decides to reach out to me. 
And of course the thank you page does not exist, so we're getting a 404 error, but hopefully you're not going to judge me for that. It was just a random uh, page to kind of showcase the capability. In reality, you would probably redirect the user to a dedicated thank you page through which you can maybe bring him back into the application or do or kind of offer him some kind of compensation. That's it. That was the third video covering an actual interview, which was uh, much shorter than you could actually do with the app with the agent. And uh, I hope to see you on the next video in which section we are going to cover the actual analysis. Thanks.